All right, so I'm going to continue on just using my lasso with a two pixel feather and cutting out the outside edges on my merged layer. And I do it this way so I don't have to waste a lot of time cutting out edges that are already covered up by another layer. I'll do it in big chunks like this. I'll hit delete a few times because that feathers it. That's why I like to have the gray background on so you can kind of see that transition. That's just a little soft. And sometimes you need to get some distance to see where you really want that edge. And I just wiggle it to get that organic kind of feathery texture. There we go. Now these legs, these legs are not as sharp as I want them to be. It's hard to get good leg reference, but getting a good cutout of them will help them appear less fuzzy. Because they are high resolution, they were just a little bit blurry in the photo because feet move when you try to photograph animals. But you see how adding that hard edge really does help. And it's not 100% hard because I have a two pixel feather. Now, if you're not at full resolution, though, if you're only doing it at screen resolution, I would only do a one pixel feather. I'm getting losing this, the thread here. So I want to get into the webbing. And then along the little claws. Because we want our creatures from head to toe. So we get to cut them out. We get to decide what these boundaries are to their anatomy. Remember, Command-D to deselect. And this is where I find the tablets really useful just for having an easier time kind of drawing my edges. But you can also do it with a trackpad. You can also do it with, with the mouse. It's just you can go a little bit faster with more confidence with the tablet. Eventually, you'll be required to use the tablet for digital coloring, digital painting. This is your chance to really get used to them. Command plus and command minus, zoom in and out. I'm just doing little chunks. Finding the edge. And concept work is very seldom clean and perfect because it's not finished work. It's to give a design that then will eventually get finished off in finished shots. But those finished shots might take 
a team of people, you know, weeks to finish. So I want you to be detail oriented, but but that's why I don't zoom in more than 200%. And you'll notice I'm not using the magic wand because for the most part, it's just easier to draw it. But if you want to use that, these tools can sometimes help. Make sure contiguous is turned on so you're not deleting things you don't want to delete. But you also have to get rid of all that little debris it leaves behind. So that's why I find it's often just easiest to draw my own edge. And the difference between a hard texture like scales versus a soft texture like feathers is how much you feather the, the lasso tool. So this is a two pixel feather at full resolution. It does a nice job. And this is as much as I would ever zoom in. This is 200%. Try not to be too detail oriented. And you want to cut away so you're not getting any of that background, but you want a little bit of that shadow that leads up to the background, because that's what gives it its illusion of three dimensions. So it takes some practice. And as you get more confident, you can do more in one selection. Remember, a lot of Photoshop is just making good selections. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You want to go to Image Adjustments. You start with Levels. Once you're done with that, you go to Color Balance. And once you're done with that, you go to Hue Saturation. But you'll find it under Image Adjustments. Those are what we call Direct Adjustments. So once you save it as a PSD, and you're ready to submit it online, you are going to, out of Photoshop, say save as copy, and then you can choose JPEG as an option. But you don't want JPEG for this. One of the requirements is that it's a PNG. So you're gonna save it as a PNG with the background turned off. And I'm almost there to where I can do that. All right, so you can see mine is almost all cut out, right? Got a little debris here, and then I've got the the nitpicky part that a lot of you will understand is the difficulty of, of the fur around the ears. So how can I cut that out? Now, it would be a lot to use my lasso and try to cut out all those little gaps, what are called undercuts. So instead, I'm going to use my magic wand and I'm going to turn contiguous off. And I'm going to make the tolerance a little bit bigger. I'm going to make it 32. Okay, but instead of then hitting delete, which would be a bad, bad idea, because watch what would happen if I did that. It would cut away huge parts of my character. Whoops, Command Z. Instead, I'm going to use that selection as a stencil and then use my 100% soft-edged eraser 
pretty big just to erase away the fur around the ears. This isn't foolproof, but it's pretty good. Just like when I was erasing around tree, tree leaves and branches in the last assignment. So what I'm doing is using the selection as a stencil. But you want to be careful not to subtract from with inside it. So sometimes I got to get a little bit tighter here. That's why it's nice to use a tablet as well. It's like giving him a little bit of a haircut. Now you'll notice that I haven't softened this selection at all. But I'll do that after the fact. You'll, I'll show you in just a second. So I'm just getting all the, the background around the ears cut out. Because that's definitely a sign of it not being finished. And got debris everywhere. All right, now I can deselect, Command D. I can see that that looks a lot cleaner, but it looks too sharp. So now all of this is on one layer, my cutout. Now I can use my magic wand and select the empty space with contiguous turned off. This time I'm going to be a little bit pickier. I'm going to do it 16. Now I'm going to say select and mask. The computer is very good at selecting empty space. And I'm going to feather it a little bit. It remembers my selection. Feather it. I'll just do two pixels. Actually, just a pixel and a half. I'm not going to shift the edge very much at all. Just a little bit. Okay. Now I can soften it just by hitting delete. And the delete will also get rid of all of this little debris and the more I hit delete, the more it will transition it and soften it away, just on the outside. Are there still little things it might leave? Yes, of course. Like any magic wand, you want to kind of double check it. Like there's some floating hair there. So then I can just use my lasso and trim those up. But again, not, I'm at 300%, and I really only need to be at 200% right there. We're not going for perfection. We're going for a high quality level of concept art. But concepts are all about doing it fast, which is why we don't get two weeks for this assignment. We just get two classes. And you get faster and better with practice. So what we, we're basically making are pretty high quality stickers for our creatures. Stickers you could put on your laptop. Stickers you could put onto any landscape. And our improving ground is going to be putting it into our fantasy landscape in a way that's believable. Once I have this combined layer, I have another opportunity. And that's to use a new tool. We've learned clone stamp, that's new. But the other new tool is going to be dodge and burn. And it's where we can kind of create our own shadows. Now what happens if something like this happens? You get an undercut that you don't want. Well, I can just use clone stamp in a very limited way, kind of small fairly hard, 100% opacity. And I can just grab it from here and right in that layer, just fill in that gap with some ear texture. But otherwise, I'm trying to be pretty clear on my edge control. So my edges reveal the texture of the creature at those spots. 